Hello everyone, this is Tarun Reddish. Now in this video, we will learn the two basic concepts. Point number one is expected value and point number two is standard deviation. Let us take a very very simple example to understand the logic of the word expected value. Let me ask you one simple question. You are going to write your SFM examination. How much marks do you expect in your SFM examination? Or let me put it this way. Suppose your parents are coming to you, your dad is coming to you and asking you, you know, how much marks do you expect in the coming examination? Can you just give them a sure short answer? Dad, I will surely get 70 marks. Dad, I'll surely get 60 marks. Friends, you can't tell like that because you will have some outcomes in your mind. For example, you might think that look, if the paper is easy, I will score 80 marks and I will show you. But if the paper is tough, I will score 50 or maybe 60. If the paper is average, I might not score this much. So friends, let's put these in the chart and understand this. So please look at the board now. Ideally speaking, we can have three outcomes. Okay. The paper can be easy or the paper can be average or the paper can be tough. If the paper is easy, let us say you can score around 80, average you can score around 70, tough you can score around 60. Now the next question what you would ask is that 80 if the paper is easy, what is the probability that the paper can be easy? Let us say you are having a 20% chance that the paper will be easy. You are having, let us say, a 50% chance that the paper will be average. And let us say you are having a balance, 30% chance that the paper is going to be tough. So the moment you get these numbers, you have three outcomes and you are having three probabilities. What we will do is, we will take a weighted average of this. Okay, so now let us say 80 into 20 percent that turns out to be 16, 70 into 50 percent turns out to be let us say 35 and 60 into 30 percent turns out to be let us say 18. So if you add up these three numbers, you get the answer as 35 plus 16 that is 51, 61, 69 is the mark that you are expecting. So now let's go back to the example that I told you. Your dad is asking you. How much marks will you score in the exam? You will tell to your dad, Dad, I will be scoring or I expect to score 69 marks. Now let me ask you another question. What is the logic of this 69 marks? Does it mean tomorrow you go and write the exam and you get exactly 69 marks? No, that is wrong. 69 is an average. And to be very, very practical and honest, averages does not make any logic at all. You know that average is saying that if you put your right leg in a boiling hot water and if you put your left leg in an ice cold water, on an average you turn out to be normal. That is ridiculous. Just like that, 69 marks that you got over here does not have any logic. To create logic out of the 69 marks, we do something what is known as standard deviation. So let's go to the next page now. All right, friends, now we will learn a new concept which is known as standard deviation. Friends, standard deviation is nothing but in simple terms, we call it as deviation from mean. Deviation from mean means nothing but deviation from the average. Now we have a standard table format which we normally follow for standard deviation and the table format goes like this x p x minus x bar p into x minus x bar the whole square. So friends in my example we had three outcomes. The paper could be easy, the paper could be average. Or the paper could be tough. So when the paper was easy, the marks what we looked at was 80, 70, 60 and the probability was 
twenty percent. We had a fifty percent chance over here. Then we had a thirty percent chance coming over here, and we got the average over here as sixty nine. So what do we do next? Is we take the x minus x bar, eighty minus sixty nine will turn out to be let us say eleven. Seventy minus sixty five would be one. Sixty minus sixty nine would be minus nine. Now we have to take the uh, p into x minus x bar, the whole square. Let's take the calculator for that. So it would be eleven square into the probability. Eleven square turns out to be one twenty one. One twenty one into into the probability of zero point two turns out to be twenty four point two. All right. The next one, what we have over here is one square into point five. That will give you the answer as zero point five. Last one, nine square is eighty one. Eighty one into thirty percent would turn out to be. Let's check it together. Twenty four point three. So when I add up all these numbers, it would be forty eight point five. Forty nine. Forty nine is the variance. If forty nine turns out to be the variance, forty nine square will be my standard deviation, which is seven. So, friends, we got seven as a standard deviation. The logic of this seven is, if I have got sixty nine marks as an average, my actual marks can be either. Plus seven, or it can be minus seven, which means if it is plus seven, which would mean it will turn out to be seventy-six. Minus seven would mean it will turn out to be sixty-two. So, friends, what the statistician says that this has got an approximately seventy percent chance. Your marks can be above seventy-six, which has got a fifteen percent chance, and below sixty-two, which has got another. 15% chance so friends if you look at it overall if your dad is asking you how much marks are you going to score in the examination you should go and tell him dad i expect to get 69 marks but my actual marks might range between 76 and 62 which has got a 70% probability my marks can go above 76 also but that has got only a 15% chance my marks can go below 62 also which has again got a 15% chance now your dad will tell you in other words are you telling me that anything can happen in the examination you have to tell yes dad anything can happen in the examination this is the beauty of expected value and standard deviation i hope friends you have understood the logic of this one correctly thank you so much